Okay, welcome to the last lecture of this module, uh, only four lectures in this module. Uh, and in this one we're gonna sort of come full circle and talk about T cell receptors now. So we spent a lot of time talking about immunoglobulin, or you know, B cell receptors, antibodies, of course. Um, but uh, well, as we'll see, most of the things that we've talked about, VDJ recombination and so on, um, work the same for T cell receptors as they do for immunoglobulin. So in this lecture we'll talk about a few of the distinctions between the two, um, and then just sort of finish talking about the overall differences in the diversity of our TCR repertoire versus that of our immunoglobulin repertoire. So um, the generation of T cell receptors is, is very similar to the generation of immunoglobulins um, because uh, we have, remember, uh, most conventional T cell receptors are made up of an alpha chain and a beta chain, and these are roughly analogous to uh, the light chain. So the alpha chain is analogous to the immunoglobulin light chain. The TCR beta chain is analogous to the immunoglobulin heavy chain. So you can see this here. The alpha chain of the TCR has V and J segments. Um, you know, it's like 70 to 80 V segments, around 61 J segments, um, and then a single constant uh, segment. Um, the constant regions of TCRs are very simple in comparison to immunoglobulins. Um, remember, they just don't really have much on the ends of them. Um, so, uh, you know, there's not as much to discuss about the constant region of the TCR, but um, actually quite a large number of, of V and J segments um, in the alpha chain. Similarly, in the beta chain here, we have V, D, and J, as we did with the heavy chain of the immunoglobulins. Um, a couple of differences here are that um, we only actually have two D segments in the beta chain. So, uh, a limited number of D segments, um, and each of these D segments kind of has um, uh, its own set of J segments that are immediately downstream that it uses. Um, so this limits the overall combinatorial, combinatorial possibilities here, but the overall principles are the same. We combine a D and a J, and we combine that with V um, to make the TCR beta chain. So um, if we look at that in comparison to the, the final protein that's made, we see a very similar pattern here. For the alpha chain, remember that's analogous to the light chain of, the, of immunoglobulin, we combine a V and a J, uh, we splice them together ultimately with, with a constant region, and you can sort of see where they end up on the molecule. So remember the variable region of the TCR is the part that binds to the antigen. We see that the V and the J uh, segments end up in that variable region, and then the constant region is closer to the membrane. Brain. Um, same thing with the beta chain. We combine a, a D and a J. We add a V to that. We combine it with the constant region, and you can see the same thing here. I mean, in particular, the diversity region, the D segment, um, is is really well positioned to interact directly with the antigen um, on the T cell receptor. But um, uh, nothing too new here. If you understood this for immunoglobulins, then this is basically the same thing, just with a different structure because we're dealing with a different molecule. Um, so, um, you know, mostly the same. Um, what are some ways that it's different? Well, um, I'll point out that TCR uh, recombination also follows the 12 or the, the 2312 rule that we introduced earlier. So remember that the V, D, and J segments are flanked by recombination signal sequences. Those RSSs have spacers um, which determine how RAG is able to interact with them. Um, so, um, what uh, a difference though that I'll point out here is that so you know first the alpha the alpha chain looks similar to the immunoglobulin light chain like I said the V's have a 23 the J's have a 12 um, and so you know they associate with each other that follows the rule and that's fine um, so for the beta chain remember it looks more like the heavy chain of the immunoglobulin um, it's the V segments of the of of the beta chain have 23 base pair spacers. Um, and the J's have 12, um, and so the D's in between, um, upstream they have a 12, and downstream they have a 23 to make sure that they, they associate with the correct one in the correct direction. A difference here, though, is that if you recall, um, in the immunoglobulin heavy chains, the V and the J's were both flanked by a 23 base pair spacer, so both V and J had the same spacer. Um, and so that was a natural check or a natural checkpoint to make sure that in the heavy chain we did not get any V and J recombination. We always had to have a D in between, otherwise we would violate the 2312 rule. Where you can see here in the TCR beta chain, 
In theory, V and J could recombine because we have a 23 and we have a 12. However, in practice, they don't. And so this is a little bit of a mystery in the field of why the TCR beta chain, um, why we still only get V to D to J and we don't skip D, um, even though in theory, the 23-12 rule would not be violated by that. Um, so that's a, a, an area of ongoing investigation. Uh, we'll see what they find. Um, but uh, nevertheless, um, the rule is still uh, followed um, in all the recombination events that do occur. Um, so the D is flanked on either side by um, either 12 or 23. And so that'll determine which side combines with which segment um, ultimately. So um, yeah, so um, that's uh, one small point of departure between TCR uh, VDJ recombination and immunoglobulins. Um, your book provides another table, um, which I think um, is, is very nice in summarizing some of the different sources of diversity in the TCR repertoire in comparison to immunoglobulins. So you can see here that um, both immunoglobulins and T cell receptors have a similar number of V segments overall. A major difference though is that, uh, is that uh, T cell receptors only have two D segments possible in the whole genome. Um, whereas remember immunoglobulins had like 23. So quite a bit fewer D segments. So you might think that that would result in less diversity. However, interestingly, um, if you recall, I said that um, uh, that frame shift mutations in the diversity segments of immunoglobulins usually resulted in non-functional proteins. Um, that is true for immunoglobulins. However, T cell receptors seem to tolerate those frame shift mutations much better. And so usually frame shift mutations um, caused by the addition of N nucleotides to the diversity segment of a T cell receptor result in functional proteins. And so for that reason, you can actually create all sorts of new possible uh, D segments because if you frame shift, you completely change the amino acid sequence, remember. So um, uh, for that reason, even though we only have two hard-coded D segments for T cell receptors, because the, they don't seem to mind frame shift mutations, the actual uh, number in practice is much, much higher. And so uh, for that reason, we create a lot of diversity, a lot of junctional diversity that way. Um, the um, other piece is that um, J segments uh, are um, particularly higher in the TCR alpha chain compared to all of the other options. And so uh, the huge number of J segments in the TCR alpha chain also contributes a little bit more combinatorial diversity. So you can see this here. Um, there's some other sort of more complicated differences which we won't get into, but um, ultimately you can see that um, the total all number of gene pairs, so this represents the total combinatorial diversity that's possible uh, for T cell receptors um, is, is a little bit higher than for uh, immunoglobulins. So about 6 million possible combinations for T cell receptors, whereas remember there were only about 2 million possible combinations for immunoglobulins. So a little bit higher there. However, the differences in the rules for for junctional diversity are actually much higher. So, um, you know, the things like tolerating frame shift mutation and a couple of other mechanisms that we didn't get into mean that um, junctional diversity can actually generate 10 to the 11th more unique types of T cell receptors um, uh, compared to what junctional or what combinatorial diversity would generate alone. So um, this ultimately gives us something like 10 to the 18th possible, theoretically possible T cell receptors. Um, which is five orders of magnitude higher than all of the possible immunoglobulin molecules. So um, you can see that we can recognize a really, really huge number of different antigens on our T cell receptors. Um, and so uh, this is what protects us from basically any kind of challenge that we come across. Um, this number is so high that it, it really covers almost any possible molecule that, uh, that we could be exposed to. Um, however, um, one caveat to this is that if you took a blood sample from yourself or you know a spleen sample, you would not find 10 to the 18th different T cell types there. Um, um, and for some of that reason is that that even though there are 10 to the 18th that are theoretically possible, some of them just don't work for various reasons. Just something about their conformation, their bioenergetics, just make them, they don't fold or something happens, you know, and they don't work. Um, that's not surprising given the huge number. 
The other reason is that 10 to the 18th is so many different possible antigen uh, recognition events that um, many of those T cells are going to recognize your own antigens. They're going to recognize self proteins in your body. And we don't want that. That's the source of autoimmunity. And so during the process of T cell development in the thymus, we actually negatively select T cells that are expressing T cell receptors that recognize our own antigens. And so we delete a fair number of those 10 to the 18th possibilities um, so that they don't just start attacking our own tissues. And so uh, the number that we keep around in practice is much lower. But um, ultimately, all of the mechanisms that we've discussed in this module so far um, create the possibility for a truly staggering diversity of different antigen receptors, either immunoglobulins or T cell receptors. And this is what really underlies the power of our adaptive immune system. So in our innate immune system, remember all of those pattern recognition receptors complement those things that recognize things very fast fast and very readily, those are all encoded, hard-coded into our genomes. Um, but uh, because of that, we ha only have a limited number of options. Um, and so our innate immune systems can only do so much. And, and they're constantly um, uh, being evaded by pathogens, which take advantage of the fact that we only have so much room uh, for pattern recognition receptors and similar methods. The power, though, of using uh, recombination uh, in, our, uh, in our immunoglobulin and T cell receptor genes is that we can make so many different possibilities that we just get so much more coverage from our adaptive immune system. And that's why we really ultimately rely on our adaptive immune system to protect us from infections um, and, and, and to uh, promote the, the health that most of us enjoy. Um, and so uh, I think this is a really neat part of our evolution in, in a particular way that uh, the immune system is different from any other um, organ system in the body. Um, we don't really see this, this type of genetic regulation or this type of diversity in the possibilities of what can be accomplished in any other sort of signal uh, molecules or any other sort of mechanisms elsewhere in the body. So uh, just a little plug for how cool the immune system is. Okay, so let's summarize uh, ultimately um, the T-cell receptor components of what we talked about. So TCRs are also diversified via VDJ recombination, similar to immunoglobulins. Um, the TCR alpha chain contains V and J segments, similar to the light chain of, of Ig, whereas the TCR beta chains contain V, D, and J segments, similar to immunoglobulin heavy chains. TCR gene recombination is analogous to immunoglobulin gene recombination. For the most part, it follows the same rules. Um, RAG1 and 2, um, they recombine the segments following the 12 to 23 rule, depending on the recombination signal sequences, as we saw. PNN nucleotides are added by the same enzymes, and they provide junctional diversity uh, for the T cell receptor. Um, the main difference was that TCRs have more theoretical diversity compared to immunoglobulins. So uh, they're not as bothered by frame shift mutations. And so that means that uh, we can tolerate um, a bit more uh, mutational divergence, particularly in the D segments. Um, and uh, the caveat to this though, was that not all functional TCRs are maintained by the body, especially those that recognize self antigens. And so um, in a future module, we'll talk about that developmental process in a lot of detail. Um, but you'll have to uh, wait around for that. Okay, so that's the end of week five of the course. Uh, just one more week with me. Uh, next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, some ad additional source of diversity in our ability to recognize antigen, but this time um, on the side of MHC. So um, we'll talk a lot more about MHC biology um, in the final week uh, of my section of the course. I'll see you then.